Yeah, we'll call the Board of Public Works meeting for uh, November uh, 2nd to uh, 4. First item is reading approval of the minutes unless we have a motion to suspend. I motion to suspend the reading approval of the minutes. Second. At the moving second to uh, suspend the reading approval of the minutes. Any questions? All in favor, say five saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Payment of claims. I uh, did review those claims. We did find uh, a couple things, but we did get those uh, those questions answered. So uh, all the claims are in order for the last two weeks. Uh, motion to pay claims. Second. Second, <laughs> second make payment of claims. Any further questions? All in favor, say five saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the first item on the agenda is uh, Proof Salvation Army, a road lock request for December 10th and 11th, 2015. Do we have a representative from Salvation Army here? Okay. Uh, I'll visit their uh, annual, they're allowed, I think, three or four a year, and uh, this is where they sit there near Miami Street in West Main. And, uh, they collect funds for the uh, Christmas season. So I believe that is what they're asking for. So do we have a, a motion on that? I make a motion that we approve this request. No second. And then Moon second approve the Proof Salvation Army request down to block the road December 10th, 11th. Further questions? All in favor, same final saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving into uh, old business, we will uh, continue on with the review for Officer Mike Meeks. Uh, I would remind everyone that this is a public meeting, and our intent is to complete this review requested by Officer Meeks. And I ask that you conduct yourself without any outbursts. If outbursts do occur, he will be asked to leave. We're just trying to get to a result here today. And we uh, would appreciate your cooperation in that. Mr. Mayor, I have a question before so you go further. They uh, have a uh, comment to uh, to make here. Uh, this just to bring you up to speed where we're at. At our very last meeting, we had a review of the documentation that was presented to this board concerning discipline of Officer Mike Meeks. We heard from Officer Meeks. Chief Rainey, Assistant Chief Keller, and others concerning these issues. The only question that went unanswered was the one concerning the coding and input on ticket 15B-9041. Uh, on August 6, 2015, it was decided to contact Spillman in hopes of getting a definitive answer on the syslog report that the board reviewed to get a better understanding of how the ticket was coded and by whom. An executive session of the Board of Works was called to review any new information. The original 75-page document that we reviewed was said to be 100% accurate by a Spillman uh, representative. Assistant Chief Keller then contacted a second person at Spillman to verify the first opinion. He wanted to be sure that he was giving us the best information uh, to help us make this decision. That person said, syslog may not record certain data that may be entered from other sources, being like from a uh, mobile unit. So as a third, so a third person was contacted to help settle the issue. And it was agreed, he said that the, the syslog should be accurate, but he agreed that perhaps things from a mobile unit may not actually be entered in there the way that we thought it was. Uh, so it was uh, agreed that this data was inconclusive and therefore it is not a good source of information that could be used in this review. As for the other issues that we have before us, what we're going to do here this morning, each board member um, will give their thoughts on what they have heard both in the last meeting and any information that was gained through the uh, executive session and give their thoughts on the overall disciplinary recommendation that has been presented to us. After they give their comments, I will ask for a motion on this matter. 
So at this time, we will hear from the, the board members. Mr. Mayor, I tried to interrupt you before. I did contact you in writing. Am I allowed to speak? You did not deny me in writing. What you asked for, you said that it was mentioned that I was supposed to give, you were supposed to give five days. Uh, right. That's not what they said. You always have to get five days notice if you want an item on the agenda for discussion. So, but, like the road closing, we have to receive that five days earlier so that it is on the agenda. Okay. That's so all that was for. Are you denying me the right to speak? Is that, is, am I clear on that? Is that? I answered your question, Tammy. I did not say you had to get five days notice to speak. I, I know that. Right now, I at this point, we have heard everything from everyone that had input on this the last meeting. The only reason we concluded the meeting and said we were going to extend it was we can get the information on Spillman uh, corrected, so we have an understanding. All the other items were discussed. Everyone had a chance to speak at the last meeting, so we think we have sufficient evidence other than the Spillman issue. Thank you for so, clarifying that. Yes. Can I say just a couple more things, or am I not allowed to? We're going to go through what the, the Board of Works members have on this information at this time. I, I do have a little bit more information that I'd like to present that I think would possibly enlighten them a little bit more. On what? On the different violations that I've been... As we said, the one on the, the SIS log, if we're I, not using that information. If that's not the one I want to speak of, sir. We will hear from you since you're the offended party. I'll make a brief. I promise. Yeah. Okay. It won't be like it won't be like our last meeting, John. I promise. Um, I appreciate the fact that you are going to allow, allow me to speak just a little bit further on this. Um, I know that the one thing that was hammered at last time was the legitimate law enforcement need, and I I guess I just wanted to ask where legitimate law enforcement need that that term comes from. I don't understand, so I didn't know if I could address that to Chief Rainey or Chief Keller. When, and I guess if you're just as a member, just as a refresher, it was when I printed that report and I was told I didn't have a legitimate law enforcement case, I wanted to address that with them if I could. Let's look for our Concern, I think, um, by yourself and Chief Rainey is that I didn't have a legitimate law enforcement need to print the report. I didn't know where that came from, where that... Because the call in question, the two officers that were involved in that call did not request your assistance. It had already been submitted to the prosecutor's office before you printed it. So there was no legitimate need for you to print that. Did that come from... And I know you spoke of sieges and a possible, I know you, you brought up my training regarding sieges and you, you had pointed out where I had signed off on my two training, my two trainings. Did that have anything to do with like a sieges violation? As we well? have to protect things like the printouts and the data in the criminal justice information. Okay, so is that, was that part of that? I'm sorry. Is that part of that then? Were you saying that I violated? Well, it was not a legitimate need because you had no involvement in the case and it had already been printed and sent to the prosecutor before you printed. Well, I just know that you brought up the sieges training that, I, that we had all had, and I just didn't know. Because there's a printout of a sensitive document that we didn't know where it was at the time. Okay. So do you deem that a sieges violation, then? At that time, there was, an incon there was inconclusive to say whether we had a violation to report or not. Okay. Because we didn't know if anybody who did not see it had seen it. Okay. Did not need to see it had seen it. Okay. The reason I bring that up, gentlemen, is because I did contact John Carmen, or contacted the office of John Carmen. And he is the head of the IDACs and the sieges with the Indiana State Police and the state of Indiana. And the email that I sent to them, and I actually went to a gentleman named Andre Clark. Andre Clark is actually the gentleman that sits at the desk. And I have an audio recording from him that says that he actually had a meeting with John Carmen as well as an attorney with the Indiana State Police. 
<clears throat> my email to them read, I want to thank you for speaking to me a short time ago about CHS. I have a few questions for you and appreciate any input you may have to provide. Could you please let me know what your title is, your role with the Indiana State Police, and what your background is concerning CHS? I will tell you the reason for my email. I am currently facing discipline for an alleged violation of CHS for, for printing a supplemental report another officer had typed on a sexual assault case. I have a question about CHS and security regarding the report. It is my understanding that in order for a CHS violation to occur, Sensitive information must have been given out to someone who has no permission to view it. Information such as a criminal history or a driver's license inquiry response as two examples. I have an example of something that was done in the police department I work for. Could you tell me if the following is a CJIS violation or not? An officer, Officer 1, types a supplemental report that contains the details of a sexual assault case and dates of birth of the victim and the suspect. A separate officer who has nothing to do with the case then prints the supplemental report. The supplemental report contained no information obtained from IDAX or NCIC. Even though Officer Two had a legitimate law I'm sorry, even though Officer Two had no legitimate law enforcement need to print the supplemental report, did he commit a CJIS violation? And I can play the recording, but they tell me that is not a violation. That comes from the Indiana State Police, the head of IDAX and CJIS. So legitimate law enforcement need, I guess that's the reason why I brought that up. It's, if it's a, not a legitimate law enforcement need within our department, that's fine. But I know that Assistant Chief Keller brought up my training regarding CJIS and the protection of sensitive information. There is no CJIS violation there. And that's, like I said, I can play that recording. They did call me back and told me. They said they sent a representative, but I need to get a subpoena for that. But, so I didn't know if you gentlemen have any questions regarding that. Or not. I guess uh, since we're going to be getting into this discussion, Mike, I'd like to ask you a question. Certainly. Why did you feel the need to print it? Did I already? I'll just state it simply from there. Everything I've already no, said. I'm not, uh, I'm just asking you a legitimate question. It, it was already in the prosecutor's office. Right. So, that, you know, originally it was stated that you said he did it because you didn't want to go to the prosecutor's office. I didn't say that. Remember, I played that recording, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Remember, Chief Rainey said that yeah. I said during my meeting that I printed it prior, did it prior to, and I never said that. My recording. Yeah, I, I, my personal, I'm not a law enforcement officer, but my personal opinion is why would you print that out when it was already at the prosecutor's office? What was the need to print it when it had already been to the prosecutor's office? Well, as I stated before, I approached about Captain Vinopal, who's my boss, and said, did you see that report? And he said, yes, I printed it prior to so that I could hand it to him to say, here you go, here's the report, to make it easier and handier for him to be able to make the corrections that need to be made so he could hand it to the but officer. But it's already at the prosecutor's office. That's the part that I, I really struggle with, uh, to tell you the truth, is that, uh, you know, why would you print it out? It's already over there. They, and I talked to the prosecutor's office, and I said, if you get a report like that, and you see the misspellings, what do you do? And he said, we correct them. They correct them? Before they go to the judge, yeah. I've never... They would correct I, them. I'm, I'm looking at... I'm looking at road officers out here right now shaking their heads. No, this has never occurred. I'm looking at five of them right there. That's never happened. And I've been on 21 years, Mayor. It's never happened. No. Yes. But, so. So, yeah. no, I, I just, I, I still don't think there's any legitimate need to have to print that out. Fair enough. That's me. Fair enough. Okay. Um, as far as, I guess the other thing that, I, that I'm concerned about then, too, is what I'm actually charged with, conduct unbecoming of an officer. I guess I just don't see where... If I didn't have the legitimate law enforcement need to print a report, and I keep that report, that that's a conduct unbecoming of an officer. I mean, we're talking, um, shall I include that which brings the department in disrepute or reflects discredit upon the member as a representative of the police department, or that which impairs the operation or efficiency of the department and its members. I guess I don't see where printing a report is that deep of a violation. I guess that's, that's something else that concerns me. And that, my eyes, I think that that's something that, if you think about conduct and becoming, it's something that shocks the conscience. Like, that officer did that? I don't think printing a report to show my boss, hey, there's some mistakes here, and then keeping that is a conduct and becoming of an officer. I just don't see where it's that deep. And I guess that, that's something I'm just asking, I guess, you three gentlemen to consider that, is that really conduct and becoming? And I guess... By, the, by what this says here, I don't see where it is. By the definition of what our SOPs say conduct on becoming is, I don't think it fits that. So I'm just asking you to consider that if you would, please. Okay. Um, the only other thing, then, too, that I had was on the third charge that I wanted to
to remind the Board of Works also that in there I was quoted as being quoted by um, Chief Rainey that I was dishonest about the whereabouts of the report. And I mean, there simply was no dishonesty there. The recording even showed that, that I said, I never said prior to. I just said that I wanted to get the prosecutor's office to let them know about that. I mean, dishonesty by a police officer, is a, no police officer, no citizen, no human being wants to be called dishonest. But a police officer who holds their integrity to the highest standard that they can, especially myself, that doesn't lie, I think that's a huge one. And I think that I've just asked you to consider the recording. You know, if there was a misunderstanding by Chief Rainey and Assistant Chief Keller that I said prior to, then that's fine. But the recording speaks for itself that I did not say prior to. And I just asked that, you know, the Board of Works members consider that and say, you know what, Mike's right. He didn't say prior to. And if they, under if they misunderstood it and thought that he said that, Maybe we should reconsider that. And that's another one. That's a conduct unbecoming of an officer, and I proved there was no conduct unbecoming. Matter of fact, I think it was conduct becoming of an officer to try to help an officer to correct his report and make it look good for judges and attorneys. So thank you for allowing me to speak, Mayor Walker. I do appreciate it. I'd ask you just to consider those, please. Thank you. Mayor, I do have one thing to say. I did get a call from, uh, from I think it's Captain uh, that, that, that Mike's talked about, and he told me that he wanted to... Uh, contact me because he felt that he was not getting a, uh, uh, the entire story, that there was some inconclusive information. Uh, he just didn't feel that the story that had been re relayed to them was accurate and, and the full situation and that he had advised his people. Uh, I think Mike had gotten with a couple other people, maybe somebody here in the area as well that deals with, uh, with that. And he had told his people that they would make no comment or support that, that it was going to be it was an administrative issue back here with him and his department. So they would not get an opinion on that. And that's, that was a conversation can I, I had over the phone with John Carmen. But. Can I play that recording for you, gentlemen, please? Yeah. you have anything else on some of the, uh, the comments? Any conduct on becoming any of that? Do you have any comments? Well, again, I, did, I don't think that was <clears throat> to print that report off it and then not know where it was at. And, and be asked several times as to where it was at. And then he came in here during the review to say that he had had it all along. Uh, not even ask him the day that Rick was present as well, uh, the day that we that he received the suspension. And he sat there and didn't say a word in his defense as to where it would be. And I, and I asked him again, because my, my concern was it had been copied off and someone else may have had it in their possession. Uh, or I, I think, like I told Mike, I think he could remember if he shredded it or not. This isn't uh, something that happens every day where a unit misspells the word vagina as Virginia. Uh, it's probably a once in a career incident where that happens. So I think the memory would be good enough you'd know what you did with that report because we don't copy them off every day. Uh, and if it, you know, if it needed to be reviewed, it could have been reviewed on the computer uh, with, with the three of them and instead of taking a chance on it, getting to someone else's hands. So I, I didn't see anything positive about it. I, I saw it was more especially after the fact that it had already been turned into the prosecutor's office. There was nothing to support or to build uh, the author of that report. It was more, I thought, of being critical uh, and creating an environment that uh, was not positive for the department. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Assistant Chief Keller, do you remember me being asked in that meeting on September 29th <coughs> the whereabouts of the supplement and that I remained silent and did not respond to the question? Do you remember that? I recall you giving an answer. Do you, mind, do, you, do you remember Chief Rainey asking me the whereabouts of that report and that I remained silent and didn't respond to his question? I remember Chief Rainey saying, just like he said, with it's a once in a career letter and you know where it's at. Yeah, but did, and you should know where it's at. And I don't recall your answer. Yeah, but did, but did I remain silent and not respond to the question? I don't recall you giving an answer. Okay. Can I, once again, gentlemen, it's, it's not true. It's not true what he's accused me of. And I have, once again, a recording to prove that he never asked me that question. It's right here. The whole September 29th meeting, he's, he's not telling the truth. It's right That's here, and I can play that. Played, right? Right. No, it's not. It's partial of that, but I can play the whole 35-minute meeting, sir. He was never asked. The question is this, Mike. You know, we listened to a lot of testimony that day, and you played those recordings, and those were, were taken. Is this the same information? No. I can play the whole recording, Me? sir. I, I cut out part of it because I wanted you guys to hear a certain part of that. But I can play the whole recording. He simply did not ask me that question. That's not true. And that's not fair. That's not fair. If I'm being accused of things and it's not true, how can I don't see how any of this can happen then. 
It's simply not true. The whole recording, from the second I walked in his office, the second I walked out. Play that? There. Why didn't you play that the first time we were here? I could play it now. No, I, I asked you why you didn't okay, do it let me, then. let me refresh my, I guess I don't understand why it matters now between then, but. Well, I mean, in all honesty, Mike, you're the one saying it matters now. If, if you had this information. Because well, I didn't know Chief Rain was going to not be truthful, Mayor. He's not being truthful. I can play that for you. He was, I was never asked that question because that was never. He brought that up later on after I played the recording. It's not true. Do you want to hear? You want to hear? Do you want to hear? Um. <laughs> so can I ask you something? Do you believe me or Chief Rainey on this? That, We're trying that, to get to this that I did or did not say that. I didn't say that. Yeah. This yeah. isn't fair, Mayor. You didn't, you it's didn't not say, fair. You didn't say what, Mike. You, you, were, you were asked he, where the report He asked that. me, do you... Exact quote, Mr. Goff, is... Chief Rain, I, I can't quote this. He said he asked me about the whereabouts of the supplement, and then he said right here, last meeting, I remained silent and did not <clears> respond <throat> to this question. I can play that recording, that whole 35-minute meeting, from that day that he's saying I said that. I didn't say it, and even, even Assistant Hugh Keller says he doesn't recall that, because it didn't happen. And it's not fair that I'm being accused of something that didn't happen. It, it seems to me that the, the, the answer to the question was that you weren't sure where that report was at, whether you had shredded that report, or whether you had that report in your control card. And I did say that, yeah. but then he, but, but that wasn't on the September 29th meeting, sir. That was back on August 28th when he asked me that. But Chief Brady is now saying but that on August the answer, the answer to that question, in my mind, was given by you on that day, on the initial day, whenever you said, I don't know whether I shredded that, I don't recall whether I shredded that, or whether I got that in my control card. So the answer to the question, to Chief Brady's question on that day, where is the report? Right, and on August 28th, on August 28th, I said that. You're right, sir. But on September 29th, he's saying that I just sat there, remained silent, and didn't respond. I knew where the report was at at that point. It's just not true. And I don't understand how I'm getting charged with being untruthful when he's being untruthful. It's not fair. Well, I had the report to prove that. On the initial question, the initial day, the initial question, you knew where the report was, and you said, I don't know where it's at. I may have shredded it. It may be in my control card. But you knew. I did. Because you presented the report on the day of your review, on okay. October 15th. You presented that report. You had it in your hand. Now, I'm not sure it was a report, but you didn't open it up and show us. Right. But you said it was. But if you recall my testimony, I said that after I left their office on August 28th, I went straight out to my police car and found it. That's my, that's my exact testimony. Once again, we can I can replay that as well. That was my exact testimony. Mr. Because Brown. you knew it was there. <laughs> I'm done. Thank you. Just to try to give you an understanding of why I'm going to vote the way I do. Uh, after reviewing the evidence, in this case, these are my conclusions. I think Officer Meeks did, in fact, fall asleep in class. I think he did print a report and kept it for two or three weeks after being asked about it by his superior. I think he did, did not call an investigator out on a robbery case, which is a violation of general order number 12. I think he admitted he filed an incomplete supplement in the robbery case. I don't think he cleared the report as no action taken. It sounds like he did he cleared it as a report. And my feeling about all of this is that we're here less about whether he should be I think we're hearing more about whether he should be held accountable for these things and not about whether or not he did them. And I think this chief feels like he should be held accountable for what he did. And I think people in, in what I'm seeing right now, looks like people out there don't think he should be held accountable. So that's how I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote that we uphold Chief Rainey's discipline. Wow. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to state that uh, there's been a lot of uh, time spent on this particular review. I think you'll recall that uh, we started on October the 1st with um, Officer Meeks uh, coming to the Board of Works meeting with several supporters and at that time asking that we review the 
disciplinary action that had been taken uh, against him. And this Board of Works uh, granted that review. This Board of Works would not uh, have had to, according to, uh, according to policy, according to law, we would not have had to grant the review. We could just go ahead. Chief Rainey could have, uh, have uh, administered the discipline. However, we decided we wanted to get to the bottom of it. We decided that uh, we needed some uh, information. And so we said that on the 15th, we would hear uh, the review from Officer Meeks. We did that. It took almost all day. Uh, there was a lot of time spent on the telephone by Assistant Chief Keller trying to get additional information that we needed concerning the validity of, of a Spillman uh, document that we had been provided on that day. And uh, after that, uh, after that document was provided to us, it looked very clear. Looked like we were 100% sure that we were told by Spill, 100% sure that this is the way it is. If it was filed, no action taken. If the case was documented, no action taken. Well, with other concerns from, from Officer Meeks and some other people in the audience, it was decided that we should maybe uh, dig into it a little deeper, and we agreed to do that. We agreed to have a meeting with, uh, and, and this meeting did take place, took place on October the 22nd. At 11.30 a.m., it was a meeting between Officer Meeks, Assistant Chief Keller, a, um, another lady, uh, Jessica Brooks, who I understand was a person that is familiar uh, and knows quite a bit about Spelman, and myself representing the Board of Works. We had that meeting that day. Uh, we had some telephone conversation with uh, the Spelman Corporation played. Uh, it had been recorded and played for Officer Meeks and Jessica and myself to listen to. Um, after reviewing uh, all of that and subsequent meetings uh, and phone calls with Spellman, uh, I know Assistant Chief Keller spent a lot of time on the telephone uh, with their representatives in an attempt to confirm uh, information, and we wanted the information to be accurate, so he did spend that time. There was conflicting information coming to us from Spellman in regard to the clearance code that was entered uh, by Officer Meeks on the morning of the crime. A lot of conflicting information. And as a result of, uh, well, you know, this is 100% sure, well, no, we're not 100% sure. With all of that conflicting information, then uh, it is my feeling that uh, the clearance code should not be considered in this disciplinary matter. Uh, in fact, Officer Meeks may have entered that as report, and it may have been changed uh, somewhere along the line uh, to no report, but then again, it was conflicted because another report would say something else. So uh, I, and myself, am not going to consider uh, the clearance code in this disciplinary matter. Um, as I stated in the review on October the 15th, um, Officer Meeks lacked a sense of urgency when investigating the attempted armed robbery. I stated that. Officer Meeks stated to several officers at roll call on the morning of the alleged crime that he was not sure that there was even an attempted robbery that had occurred. Officer Meeks stated that he did complete the supplement and that the supplement did get forwarded to day shift officers uh, for their review. However, evidence shows that this supplement was incomplete, leaving out uh, some very important information to the case, and it was not corrected and made complete until four days later. Officer Meeks on this supplement did not list any involvements on this report. The victim wasn't listed. Uh, call to the daughter of the victim was not listed on this report. And Officer Meeks also did not call criminal investigators to the scene of an attempted robbery, which, as I understand, is required by SOP uh, in the case of robbery. As far as the second and third offenses go, the conduct, the conduct unbecoming the sexual assault case, uh, Officer Meeks printed a supplement report without a legitimate law enforcement need, and he printed that two days after the alleged sexual assault. 
Officer Meeks advised his chief, assistant chief, that he was uncertain where the printed copy of the supplement was, whether he had shredded it, or whether he had that in his patrol vehicle. Officer Meeks stated at his review on, on the 15th that the printed report had been locked up in his patrol vehicle uh, from the beginning. So to me, that means that he knew where it was at when he answered the question. He wasn't sure. Uh, he was not being truthful. He knew where that printed report was at. Officer Meeks did not inform the uh, chief or assistant chief of whereabouts of the report. And uh, until I believe on the 15th, whenever we all heard about it, when he presented it here and held it up for uh, us to look at, but not open. We didn't. We weren't sure that was a report, but he stated that it was. As far as the fourth against the fourth offense goes of sleeping uh, while on duty, uh, Officer Meeks did admit to uh, the fact that he was having trouble staying awake uh, during that meeting. So those are my findings in the case. Um, to go over everything that, that I feel on this would be repetitious and uh, from what some of the others have said, but Mike, as I mentioned earlier, the things that bothered me was uh, I don't think there was a legitimate law enforcement need on printing that report. I think you have a sensitive document that should not be printed out and kept in a car or stuck in a desk drawer or wherever someone would put it. Um, so I think you know that uh, charge is very valid, <coughs> valid that it was made. Um, the investigation on the robbery, uh, you know, as uh, Steve has mentioned. I think he makes a lot of valid points, and, and I would agree with how he stated his concerns on that particular case. And, uh, the things on the, the sleeping, uh, and you admitted that day, as, as Steve mentioned, that you were having trouble. You know, I would, I would hope that anybody that is having trouble like that, if they can go to whoever's conducting the class and say, hey, I've you know, had some problems and, and haven't been able to sleep, can I reschedule that? I think we would make every opportunity to try to reschedule when you'd be more refreshed and be able to, to uh, be able to learn from the class. Uh, so I think there are a lot of things that have been presented to us are, are very accurate and uh, it is a matter of accountability. And so I would agree with what these gentlemen said instead of restating everything that they said and agree with them and uh, say that the chief's recommendation was an accurate portrayal of what happened. So with that, do we uh, have a motion on the floor on this issue? I'll make a motion we we'll uphold the chief when he's disappointed in this issue. Second. It has been moved and seconded to uphold the chief Green's recommendation for discipline. Any questions? All in favor, saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Motion to adjourn to be in order. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have information that shows that I was on the call twice. Wow. They wouldn't let me present, just so you know. What? Wow. You want to see it? Nothing but a bed Nothing but a bed
Let me just sign this, please. First highlight. Uh, first highlight is 1044. Oh, no, no, 819. Oh, 819, sorry. 819, which is where I reopen the call. So I have a by T violin. Call type reopened and assigned. So this is in reference to the... The first charge. Okay. Um, 831 is the next one? No? Yes? 831? That's a fine Is there, it was closed by Officer Pittner. And Officer Hoover, close them as well. Again, we open at 10, 43. Now, my phone at like 7, 19 in the morning. Open by me. Completed by me. So, I will have to ask my boss if I can give you copies of this. You've seen it. Um, and they were all for this information, but weren't interested. You are an officer of the law. I am not an officer of the law. Dispatcher. Do you have so, an opinion? I know that this is going to be a tough question you might not answer, but do you have an opinion about those things they, in terms of how he was treated? How he was treated? Oh, wow. Um, what those things state is that there's reasonable doubt on how that call was closed. Yeah. And they all said, yes, that maybe he didn't close it that way. But that was the charge. The charge was that he closed it, no action taken, and that he, and he talked to people outside. He presented all of this in the last meeting. So, City or county? Um, well, it's a 911, so it's all one. When you close something, is so if it was originally closed, report, what's the, uh, the SF, like what's generally done after that? I don't know. He was closed in Mike's car. Okay. That's It's a different, it's a mobile system. I don't know. What do you have to do as a dispatcher, though, when it calls and closes report? Do you help forward that information to their office? I, close, I type in RPT. Whatever happens after that is all within Spelman. Okay. Okay. But I didn't close a report. I closed, closed it, no action taken. Okay. I mean, sitting here and you guys can review it. You know there was reasonable doubt in every single charge. Did you take the original call? Um, actually, I think my partner took it that morning. I think Christina took the call, but I dispatched it. Because sometimes if you're, one of you is on the phone with the caller, the other person puts out over the radio. <laughs> so when they're all in their cars, on the stuff that we get, the public report of that. Mm -hmm. Is that done on their car or is that done It's done on later? their, it's done on their systems. I don't know where they do it. Sometimes they do it in their car, sometimes they take their system and the, their units come out of their cars. And then the supplements can be done that way too? They could do it mobile or I they do, could I don't do, do it supplements, here, so I can't comment on supplements. Well, it's really confusing when you read it because we see, what we see is the actual 15P, blah, 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 blah. We see that and we see the officer and the time, and then we see later down the line, you have to like actually follow 15P la 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 and see, oh, okay, now Hoover's on it. Oh, okay, now mm -hmm. Stuber's on it. We have to be able to decipher that, but I want to know who puts like initially on that call, you dispatch Mike, and Mike gets done with the call and it says no action taken. You're the dispatcher and he's the officer. Which one of you puts that? It depends. It depends. If he does it in his car and calls it out over the radio and it, he's already completed it off the screen, but if he's busy or going to another call and he's like, Central, clear that call, then so I've done it. So you could sometimes and yeah. he oh, could yeah, absolutely. sometimes. It's not it's, it's definitive Whatever the efficiency is, that. yes. That was the question that I had is... Who does that? Because we, what be we us. have says no action taken, and but we don't have a supplement. We have the press release. Like, let's say you're on a call, and I give you the call, and you're on it, assigned to it, but another officer wants to go, he can assign himself to that call. Okay. So, it, I mean, it's that's the whole beauty of this system, is that the dispatchers aren't typing their little fingers off all the time if there's assistance going. So. Hey, Tammy, could you? I, yeah. uh, you want to see again? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Courtney, can you go find Molly for me? She's right, right there. there. Molly, can I show them this? Or can I give them this? Or what is it? It is where I reopened the call twice and the matching things that show that I reopened the call. Are we allowed to have those? Can they be redacted and can we have them if they have stuff on them that isn't? I was going to offer this to them. This is where Mike completed the call. Z50 completed the call at 705. This is where it was reopened. Call type reopened. Matching time 819. 
Paul said, reopen by G5. Oh, okay. yes. I don't have a number, so that's why there's nothing here. Paul <coughs> type.